everybody, this is Adam Brown of Liberation Alliance Republic I coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network here in the office. Yes, I know, I've been extremely late with the show. Um, I'm not even uploading this at the right time. I'm recording this, oh uh, god, wasn't it, eight hours after it should have gone live. I'm a shitty host, I've already started the new year off horribly, but all kinds of shenanigans hit the fan. I've been readjusting my sleep schedule because I'm no longer a night shift worker. I am finally a day walker about fucking time. So, enough about me. You guys see me a lot. So, I'm going to turn the buck over a little bit to uh, Varys. He is the owner hey. editor. Uh, he does all the fun things over at libertariangaming.org. Uh, you know, he's basically my boss over there, in a manner of speaking. Uh, even though none of us get paid for this shit, it's still something we do for fun. Uh, and eventually we want to turn into a little bit without slave manager. labor, right? <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Uh, so we wanted to talk about four different articles that Varys has written in the last, what, two, three, four months, something like that. You've been really pumping last out these articles week. all over the place. Yeah, a lot of them last week even. Jesus. All uh, of them last week. <laughs> was that free market one last week? Uh, maybe a couple weeks, but it was two definitely weeks. Within... Two weeks ago. Good God. You wrote that right before the new year, you fucker. So, anyways, uh, Varys, tell my audience, even though they know you, give them a, my new audience a little bit about yourself uh, and why you did Libertarian Gaming. Go. Well, um, let's see here. I was born to a single mother in a small home in Natick, in Massachusetts, in 1991. And you I was touching. <laughs> and I was the best thing to ever come out of the... No. Uh, <laughs> I, I started up Libertarian Gaming with a couple friends last summer because we, we just thought that gamers would probably appreciate the, the libertarian perspective on things. Gamers don't want their games banned. Libertarians don't want games banned. It, it just worked, and people liked it well, so I don't know. But, yeah, I, I break the website. That's pretty much all I do when I write and I recruit people and deal with... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, editing is a bastard, isn't it? Yeah. And that's why I have never written anything, because you would have six hours of editing for a 20-word essay on something. Uh, I don't think you would want that. I am an awful writer. That's why I put a mic in front of my face and think I'm going to do something good, uh, even though it's almost never anything good, but that's besides the point. So to get to the meat of this episode, uh, there are four articles uh, that everybody should be going to, libertariangaming.org, to read along with. Uh, there were uh, the most recent article, uh, maybe not the most recent, probably the most fantastic in my opinion, uh, was your analysis on were the Nazis ever truly defeated? Uh, you do a little bit of background history on it, and then you bring up some great points about, well, 2015, there's still a Nazi party. There's actually quite a few. Uh, and you talk about their platform, one of which uh, being, we demand the organization of society into racial into a racial community which will embrace all Aryans, regardless of wealth or social background. We further demand that the state fight to eliminate every recognizable social evil and ensure social justice for every member of the racial community, including the right to decent housing, proper medical care, and generous provision for old age. So, where do we begin? Why is it that you know this socialism, this uh, national socialism, has you know, still stuck around. I thought we wiped that out when we wiped the floor with them in World War II, or is that just more government propaganda? Well, uh, I mean, I think I included this in the article, but there was Operation Paperclip where they took a bunch of scientists and other people into the U.S. The, those weren't the only people they took in the U.S. They took a... I mean, obviously, they, they adopted, in addition to technology, they adopted a lot of uh, structure of government because the the Nazis they they knew what they were doing for the most part they I mean they made some from from a liberty standpoint obviously they were very terrible but they did know what they were doing and they knew how to control populations and the U.S. government took some stuff out of their handbook there right like I'm just grazing through the article a little bit um, I, I read it in full earlier but I don't want to steal any of your thunder uh, it you talk about how you know, there's all of this uh, stuff about voter ID laws. We demand the state make its duty to provide opportunities of employment, or no. I'm sorry. Let me read up ahead. I'm retarded. Uh, only a citizen is entitled to decide the leadership and laws of the state. We therefore demand that only citizens may hold public office, regardless of whether it's a national state or local office. Sound like our Constitution much? 
you know, why is this such a big issue? I mean, it's voter ID laws are so huge with the conservative groups. You know, why would they side with the Nazi party? Well, I mean, it, like you said, it from the the constitutional standpoint, I mean, a lot of things go back to a big focus on the American citizen, and that that's probably the nationalism that comes out of it. But in Nazism again is national socialism. It has a high emphasis on nationalism and socialism. Uh, as if they weren't both terrible by themselves. When you combine them, you get some really evil shit. But uh, the conservative side, I I would. I don't like to clump all people together, but I'd say there are a lot of racists definitely within their ranks and a lot of people who are very fearful of Mexican immigrants and immigrants in general. And if you look back into the U.S. history when there were a lot of Chinese immigrants, Polish immigrants, Irish immigrants, there was always a strong opposition to them. And then years afterwards, after they've already melded with the population, now they're suddenly cool and they're someone new that they hate. So right now it's pretty much Mexicans that people are so angry about immigrating to the US but a lot of the the Nazi party platform points from the 20s do focus on uh, citizenship and and where people are born and if they are of you know a really a, a German race then they can be considered a citizen and they can do all these things that German citizens would do and they would have full rights kind of like in America they only want Americans you know, I mean, I, I'd say that slowly but surely there's probably one day we're going to wake up, it's going to be a, uh, an American race from all, all the uh, the melting pot effect. But regardless, they're, they're pointing out basically if you're part of this one race, then you're more important than these other races. And that that mirrors Nazism. Right. And you know, this this list just doesn't stop. I mean, I'm I, when I read it earlier, I mean, this is just laughable. And it's it's no... No surprise that you know post World War II, after you know, again we wiped the floor with with the actual Nazis, you know the 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 ones that wore the the fancy armbands that look all nice and cool and are kind of hipster, especially with the awesome little hipster mustaches. Um, you know we we talk you you go 13, 20, 21, 23, 25. Uh, we see uh, that they demand the nationalization of all enterprises. Uh, Occupy Wall Street movement, anyone? Uh, they want well, all of... converted into corporations on uh, number thirteen. Right. I mean, the holy crap. I mean, that's already here. This focus on public interest before private interest. Uh, they demand laws to fight against deliberate political lies and their dissemination by the press. Uh, you know, they require national health, or it must ra the state must raise them. You know, level of national health by means of mother-child care, blah 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 blah, banning child labor. Now, I could be wrong, and you may know a little bit more on the history than I do, but it wasn't long after World War II that child labor got banned, wasn't it? Or was it sometime before that already that the U.S. had banned child labor? I don't quite recall, offhand at least. Um, I think it was before. I I, I want to get the exact year. I don't want to say anything that's false here, so uh, hold on here. Oh god, there's more than one law. <laughs> of course there is. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that in the 1800s, that's when we started to really see them, but uh, I... Okay. No, it, 19, oh, well. okay, no 1938, 1932, um, 1935, so in the 30s, there was a lot of them, in the 40s, there were more of them. But I, I'm pretty sure some started probably on a state level in the 1800s. Right, yeah, I see Massachusetts in 1836 enacted uh, the first child labor law, uh, which required children under 15 working in factories to attend school at least three months out of the year. So what started innocently ended up turning into a giant so clusterfuck. It, so the state says. Yeah. And then this whole talk uh, in number 20, it says, in order to make higher education, blah, 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 translation, state wants to run the schools, it wants to make everything free, it wants to make it uh, free for everybody. Yeah. Cool, oh, free. Cost your liberty, it, just one easy payment of all your liberty. Yeah. Just one liberty, and uh, <laughs> yeah, one you liberty. get all this. <laughs> and then at the very end, we see number 25, to carry out all the above, we demand the creation of a strong central authority in the Reich. Unquestioned authority by the political center, central parliament over the entire Reich and over its organizations in general. The establishment of trade and professional organizations to afford, enforce the, the basic laws in the individual states. Um, 
Yeah, no. I mean, I know this part of this could be, you know, straight out of a more nationalist, uh, kind of federalist uh, look at the Constitution, but, you know, my God, this is what we're seeing now. Now, of course, that's not us saying that our our country and, well, our country uh, and our government is, you know, actually Nazi. It's not quite there yet. It's getting there. Uh, it's more no, communist is, leaning, but the point is we're leaning there, and the Nazis never died, right? No, they they just took a different form and and moved elsewhere. Um, right. when it was inhospitable for them to be in Germany because they would just be killed for being a Nazi, they they just moved, and some of them actually did directly move to the U.S. Right, and, and this is the same kind of molding, and the uh, to use a gaming reference, they they kind of this the state apparatus is sort of like a ditto. It will turn itself into whatever it needs to in order to survive, uh, in order to get what it wants. Uh, I know this is a really horrible loose reference, but you know when you when you can transform yourself into whatever you want to be and to be you know super OP like Mewtwo or to be this whiny little stupid ass fish Magikarp, <laughs> uh, just to find a way to survive and to make people pity you or to make people be afraid of you. You know the state will do whatever it takes, uh, and you know it, again the state is as it is, uh, no matter the form it takes. Uh, so it's no surprise that the Nazis were never truly defeated. Uh, so you know you get one internet for that great article. Uh, we'll see if you earn three more. I think you will, because uh, obviously we're good friends. So you're gonna get these. <laughs> <three. laughs> yeah, no, that that was a great article. Uh, and again, for those of you watching, well, thank you. Uh, libertariangaming.org uh, and Click under the libertarian uh, banner there, um, little clicky thingy. I don't know what you would call it, uh, but click on that to watch, to look at all the libertarian focused uh, articles. There is one under gaming uh, with this uh, feminist frequency partnering with Intel article, which again is just a smashing uh, of of this whole setup. Uh, but anyways, we'll get to that here in just a minute. Uh, next article: If the U.S. Postal Service is snail mail, what would the internet as a utility look like? Now, for those who haven't read the article, uh, long story short, you show how, you know, with uh, Tom Wheeler being FCC chairman and a telecom lobbyist, uh, and how U.S. Postal Service is a complete sack of shit, uh, you know, it would only be fair to say that if the Internet were to be some sort of public utility, that it would just go straight to the shitter. So what's your evidence? Well... We can, like, like I said in the article, we can look at the USPS. We can look at the, um, God, I ain't take any any government anything, and you can find this. I mean, recently, some armed forces social media got hacked by ISIS. I mean, the it, they're so bad at what they do, they can't even they can't keep themselves safe. They can't keep us safe, and anything they do ends up blowing up and has unintended consequences. And when with with this, the whole you know, oh look, the internet should be a utility because hooray for free things or hooray for subsidized things. It would really just make itself much more expensive. Everyone was cheering so so happily about the Affordable Health Care Act. Oh well, the government's finally penning together a bill to make health care cheaper. No, surely it'll be cheaper. It ends up being much more expensive. People lose their health insurance. And that's because when the government mandates things, there can't be tailored solutions to specific problems. Instead, it's just broad strokes of the pen on very specific problems, and through that, things get ignored, and there are huge inefficiencies that are created. Right. Well, you brought this up in the article, but I kind of want to get your take uh, through the voice, because I think you speaking things is a little bit more powerful than, than the written word, personally. Um, you know, there's the objection that would be brought up, well, you know, all of these internet service providers, they're all kind of shitty. Uh, Sudden Link is awful. Uh, there's one in my local area called Big River Telephone. Oh, good God. I mean, the people are nice, but the service is just fucking awful. Charter is awful. Uh, Comcast, ATT, Uverse, all of that. You know, they're local monopolies, and we're supposed to be opposed to monopolies, right? They, these are nothing but corrupt and evil things, right? Well, we need the state to to dial this back and make it public and free for everyone so we're not getting charged all these these crazy prices, right? Isn't that the way to go forward? Well, 
it, every time the state gets involved with markets, that, that, that's what makes these monopolies. And like, for example, with uh, the the whole the whole aspect about this and about net neutrality, where you can't really provide better service to you know certain websites than other websites, stuff like that ensures that there is no way that any new upstart companies could provide any new features that the current ones don't, which means that the the current ones can just hold their monopolies, and if anyone tries to you know come up and take their throne, they can kick them down the steps and sue them or something. <laughs> right. Oh, gosh. So, all right, I'm gonna just going to read your last paragraph here for this article because it is just so perfect. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, With rotting lines, the future of the Internet is going to be handled by a very small group of corporations. With laws on the books protecting their monopolies, there won't be any groups to shake uh, them from their thrones. They're going to rule like kings, and we're all going to have to put up with it or go without Internet. The state already loses your mail, keeps you tied up in lines for a whole day to get pieces of plastic that the state mandates, and robs you to pay for its projects. A few years ago, the NSA was a hot topic. People wanted the state for as, as far as possible from the Internet. Why would you ever want to hand more governance uh, of the Internet to their laps? Uh, why would you ever want them to oversee private data more? The U.S. Postal Service loses your mail, and now they're going to lose your Internet traffic. They're going to lose your Internet traffic through packet loss created by poorly maintained lines, and they're going to spy on you even more. That's a great future, isn't it? And just the perfect ending statement. Might as well start mailing all your online data from now on, because the future holds equal misery in both a state-controlled Internet as it currently does in a state-controlled postal service. So... You know, clearly we should be, you know, sending all of our porn from our computers uh, through the mail on discs in sort of a uh, Netflixian uh, DVD rental service, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's, that's how, you know, Pornhub announcing their new feature, an internetless internet service where they, they mail you discs. You, you, you browse through this catalog, you circle videos you want to click on, and you right-click below it. You send it in, and they, they mail you back a few discs. That's I would so buy that. <laughs> I would so do that. Just for the giggles. I don't even like Pornhub. It's it's just got so awful now. Anyways, too much information <laughs> you know, they, for the audience. Have, Pornhub has a uh, a professional esports team now. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think they're a Dota team or they're, they're something. They're some... Something. Or like a a duty team, team. Right? Sorry, sorry, sorry. They're a StarCraft team, and their sponsor is Pornhub. <laughs> so how does that work? I mean, I get what sponsorships do and stuff like that, but <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. That's wow. StarCraft. Yep. So <laughs> I'm gonna go to blog.uporn.com. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> team <laughs> team Uporn revealed Uporn sponsors competitive esports team. It's been a long time coming, but we're finally excited to announce Uporn has officially thrown its hat into the competitive esports arena with with a sponsorship of the newly formed Spain-based Dota 2 team Play to Win. Ah, uh, that's Uporn though. I'm talking about Pornhub now. They they have Oh wait, what? Oh fuck, I fucked up. The, yeah, multiple uh Yep. Wait, porn porn sites. Oh my god. So I guess they should be playing dating simulators then, more so. Right? I mean, oh wait, I'm so, totally I messed sense. up now. Hold on, I messed up. Sorry, let's back up a bit. Okay, this was posted on the Reddit StarCraft. But, okay, no, uh, backing up. Total Biscuit, his sponsor is Pornhub. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> I mean, why do I get the feeling that there's going to be some sort of video online of Total Biscuit doing some form of sexual act? It would know. just be perfect. I, I mean, that would have to be part of the contract. That British wouldn't it? voice with that that the British uh, crumpety voice. <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, let's get away from this a little bit. <laughs> I I have a family friendly show to upkeep. Clearly, yep fucking dirty perv. Right, so to refresh everyone, <laughs> Pornhub, Total Biscuit, you porn Dota 2. 
<laughs> Hail Ikea, racist grandfather. Uh, what? <laughs> Anyways, all right. So this was another recent hit article that you did. Uh, again, all of them are pretty well hits because they all kick ass. But this one dealing with a, a more recent gaming uh, shenanigans going on. Feminist Frequency is partnering, partnering with Intel. But what does that mean for gamers? So for a lot of you that don't know, uh, and even I'm still somewhat on the outskirts of real knowledge on this kind of stuff because I'm not a true gamer. I'm kind of a casual um, I just enjoy this community and such, and I play Minecraft, so whoop de fucking do uh, Intel, uh, big tech company. Obviously, they make a lot of great CPUs. Uh, they have decided that in order to promote advancement of diversity in gaming and technology in general, they're going to push $300 million, which to them is chump change. I mean, let's be honest. They kick fucking ass for a reason. Um, they're going to be bringing minorities and, and women and stuff into the fold, and one of the groups that's going to be helping with this, you know, whether it's some, I don't know what the partnership exactly is, whether they're going to be uh, sort of like sideline uh, consultants or they're yeah, going to be from what, actually. From what it ahead. looks like, it is a consultation type deal. Right. Um, so with, with Feminist Frequency uh, being Anita Sarkeesian, which as many of you know is, and I'm just going to say the word right now, the cunt uh, who got herself involved in the Gamergate uh, shenanigans. Um, you know, she it, she runs this thing, and she's getting involved in in this whole attempt to diversify. Which we should be clear that diversity within a community, as far as for you know gaming or tech or any sort of marketplace, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you know, unless it creates worse products, which Intel is not stupid enough to do. Um, you know, it's not a bad thing. Uh, so we've seen probably lots of articles, and there's been a lot of outcry of people saying, oh, screw Intel, let's not buy from Intel anymore because they're they're pairing up with Anita Sarkeesian. Uh, you take a different take, so why don't you kind of run through it for people? Well, I actually, I, I would say if you don't want to support this kind of behavior, you definitely boycott them, hurt them in their wallets, do whatever. But this people are, are thinking that gaming is doomed because of this, and that's not the case. I mean, Intel doesn't actually have any shovel for games. They only make processors, and they're not about to make the processors like stop working with mainstream games just because of Anita. And I, I just, I don't really see the threat that many people see in this. Intel's not in the kind of position. Now, if it was like Valve came out and said, yeah, you know, we're releasing Episode 3, and we're going to have Anita write the whole thing, then I would... Oh, I would be very concerned. I would tell people, please don't give them any money. Let them know to fire her. But Intel, they, I mean, I, I love the processors. I personally think the processors are the best. I have an i7 in my laptop. Uh, I, the next processor I buy with my upcoming desktop is going to be an i7. It, I just I can't recommend Intel enough as a hardware standpoint. But if, if you're opposing this on ethical reasons or whatever, then fine, boycott them, but just know you're probably not going to get the best product if you do. Right. So, now, do you see this as a potential thing for AMD to capitalize on, uh, or is this just going to be, you know, some stuffy kids stamping their feet about something that's ultimately going to be a non-issue down the road? I mean, I, I personally think this is going to go away, seeing as how quickly people forget about things. I, I definitely understand why people are concerned, and I, I really... Really don't like Anita involved in anything, but I I feel like AMD might I I don't know I I feel like overall both companies are probably in the same mindset with things and they both approve of this kind of you know thing because diversification words like that looks really good when you're trying to sell a product to a lot of people people really like that kind of stuff so I don't think they're gonna say you know oh Intel's selling you guys out because diversification is bad or something. They're not going to say that, well, don't pair up with a, a feminist, a feminazi. They're not going to say anything like that. But Intel might lose some sales to AMD in the long run. Or, I guess, in the, in the short long run, in the medium-ish run. Right, so probably within the next six months, but then after that, everybody's yeah. going to go crawling back to Intel when they realize, oh, hey, my AMD processor uh, with, you know, 12,000 cores just overheated because it's yeah. not as good. Uh, again, I'm not saying anything bad about AMD. I 
I do think oh, they, I make, <laughs> they, they make reasonably good products. I mean, they wouldn't be as big as they are now if they didn't provide some sort of, you know, reasonably quality service. I mean, uh, they, they definitely provide to uh, the market that's demanding their stuff. And I, I like their, their right. graphics cards are a, a lot of good in a lot of ways that people ignore. Like, they, they support OpenGL a lot better than NVIDIA cards do. They can handle stuff like that a lot better. But their processors have always been subpar to Intel, and uh, there was a time where AMD was on top for the processor industry, but now they... Mm. Oh, not even close. Those I mean, i7s, though. <laughs> I've been shopping around, and I'm, I am finally decided I'm going to upgrade at some point here within the next year and get uh, one of the i7 5820K, I think it is, uh, the Haswell E series, uh, so I can start taking advantage of DDR4 oh, RAM so on an X99 board. Uh, it's just going to be so sexy. I'm going to be running uh, a GTX 970 by the end of the year, um, so I'll actually be able to produce quality content here pretty soon, and not have you know any kind of major bottlenecks that are going to take six and a half hours to fucking render out a video of us talking with one video being shot in the whole damn thing. Uh, fucking outdated bullshit that my girlfriend has. Oh, That's well. Right. <laughs> so, moving on. So, again, you've won three internets now. Uh, I forgot to mention the other internet that you won uh, with the other oh, article. Hidden internet. Yeah, yeah no, you, it's a, again, great article, and you know, it really just kind of breaks through the doom and gloom. Uh, just craziness. I mean, yes, Anita Sarkeesian, fucking cunt. Uh, I will say that again. Cunt. Um, she should stay as far away from the world as humanly possible. Ideally, we'd like to start sending her to the sun, but she would probably get too much glory out of it, so... Eh. What to do people with her? People need to stop paying attention to her, I think. I mean, it, people, like, really freak out about this kind of stuff, and they're, they're just feeding the beast. It's not something that needs to be freaked out about. Exactly. She's just a, a person. I mean, she's no more powerful than any other person. She has some really crazy ideas, but by herself, she can't do that much. Right. There are followers so, that are more frightening than her. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of frightening feminist stuff, have you seen the post that's making its way through Facebook uh, where there's, I think it's in Spain, I don't remember where, uh, but there's all these feminists who are deciding to wear white pants and not wear you know, protective things uh, when they're on their menstrual cycle. They've decided, uh, hey, let's... This sounds uh, like a feminist thing to do. <laughs> let's let the menstrual blood, you know, go all the way down our leg. Let's let it crust around our vagina. Let's let it be all over the place on our white pants because, you know, we Very need to be aware of it. It's, it's awful. I'll provide a link in the description bar below for those of you who are stupid enough to click it. Uh, I will even say, don't click here. But you're going to click it anyways. You're on the internet. Who gives a shit? Uh, but if you're at work, why are you watching this show? And definitely do not click the link if you're at work. It's fucking disgusting. Uh, anyways, moving on. You've won three internets so far, Varys. Can you win the fourth? Uh, let's find out. So, December 30th, 2014. One of, one of the last articles that you wrote for the website. I think this is probably the most controversial thing you've wrote uh, in so far as the Liberty community is concerned. Uh, oh no, I went after Molyneux. That that made people angry. <laughs> eh, well, you know, even then people are, you know, that's just a cult of personality uh, a sort of vibe that they're giving Molyneux. Obviously he's not a cultist, he's not a cult leader or anything like that. Uh, well that's conversation for another time. Um, I think for those of us who define ourselves as free marketers, as you know, market anarchist, anarcho-capitalist, whatever you want to call us, you know, proudly wearing the yellow and black. Although in my case, I'm wearing red, white, and black. So, fuck it, I'm an ancom right now. Uh, damn it. Anyways, um, you know, you say that this current market isn't free, which is correct, and. You know, we see all these people talking about, you know, oh, this great innovation in the market and how, you know, it's great that we have that the free market provides these things. What do you say? Uh, 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 wait a minute. This isn't even a free market scenario anyway, so you can't claim the free market as the one who created this. So, does this create the slippery slope that because we don't have a true free market, that technically speaking, these things are uh, created 
because of partial government interference? Is that counterproductive to the cause? Give the whole argument. Like, line it all out. Okay, well, the, I don't think the current... The current market's not free. It's I, When people say this, I, I will usually correct them in this fashion. I'll, I'll tell them it's not a free market. It's a highly regulated market. There are many regulations that are imposed upon these groups. Even if they don't obey them, it's still not a free market because they are not free. They are being held at gunpoint, or at least threatened by it. So right. I think it would be very misleading to call it a free market because there are, there are there's a lot of legislation on the books where... There, these companies are being expected to adhere to and to abide to. Uh, even well, if they don't, it's beside the point. But uh, to say that it, it, it's counterproductive to to say that it's not a free market because it, it's not the current products in the market aren't created because of the government. They're created miraculously with the government still there. It's it's not something where, you know, these wonderful products exist because we have the government. It's like in spite of the government being there, we have these awesome products because these companies are just that much more awesome. They're finding a way to still put out good stuff while being held at gunpoint. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. And, you know, we had an interest... Well, it wasn't so much interesting. It was just funny. Uh, we were talking about regulations off the air uh, while we were kind of figuring out how we were going to talk about this uh, portion of the episode. And I mentioned that at my hotel, we have, aside from the normal business license, we have a license that lets us run our building as a hotel. We have a license that allows us to sell food and drinks out of the hotel. Not even alcoholic drinks. We don't have a liquor license. We have just a regular food and beverage license, plus, like, two other licenses that are required by the state of Missouri. And it just blew your mind that so many things are needed in the hotel industry. And, you know, I have thought, and I can still consider that the whole, uh, bleh, the hotel industry to be one of the closest things to a free market as possible because you can negotiate rates. You know, we can work out deals. Uh, there are, you know, great discounts that you can offer, and we're providing a service for people on a voluntary basis. No one has to stay at a hotel. They just do, and they have some fun with it. Uh, and yet it's still surrounded in the shroud of so much regulation. And in my current hotel, um, you know, we deal with smokers. We know we don't allow smokers uh, to smoke in our rooms, whether that be cigarettes, cigars, pot, or, you know, any other sort of drug. And if we find any sort of drug paraphernalia in their room, we don't call the cops right away. We fine them $250 and ban them from the hotel. You know, if that's not libertarian leaning or, you know, anarchist free market leaning in itself, I don't know what is. But again, it's all couched in the violence of the state. Uh, so it's kind of put me in an interesting uh, mental situation. Uh, so, it, you know, what, what do you think about that, Ferris? Well, it's definitely a market, but. I, I wouldn't call it, again, a free market because, yeah, it is shrouded in all those regulations. Markets inherently are going to have voluntary interactions, but then they won't have voluntary interactions on other fronts so long as it's not a free market. When it is a free market, a truly uh, laissez-faire market, that, then you have you know truly voluntary interactions on all fronts. But uh, if you guys start serving food without that food license, start serving you know drinks non-alcoholic drinks without a, a drink license and then, and then someone's going to kick down your door and probably be very, very mad at you guys and, and prevent you from continuing your business. So through that, I would consider it not a free market. But it, I, I think you brought this up earlier, how if you like go in the woods or something, is it a free market? It, well, maybe. Is there is there a government threatening you or not? Right, and that that's the interesting thing too is, you know, on the outset, yes, the business owners and yes, you know, people who are employed by any business that happens to reside in the United States of America or any you know government run anywhere at all, which is the entire world. Anyways, um, you know, the beginning of the first step is the government coercion when you're setting up the business, getting the licenses and making sure you're legit, legal, blah, 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 whatever. But from there on, unless you're directly dealing with the government on a daily basis, you know, I would make the argument that it still is a free market because, you know, at least in my case, you know, aside from the gun that's put at my head about taxes and, uh, you know, all this 
all the back end stuff that the guests don't have to see, uh, aside from the sales tax and stuff like that. Uh, you know, no one's holding a gun to their head and saying you have to stay here or you're not allowed to stay here uh, or here is the one well, locked in price that everyone well, pays. Well, the state so, does hold a gun to their head if you don't have your licenses, saying you can't stay here. Well, I can let them over to my house and do it for free or sexual favors. See now, right there, that <laughs> uh, prostitution of any kind is highly illegal. Who says it's prostitution? They bought me dinner beforehand. It's a date. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the the. I I will say that the crux of your argument is entirely correct. Uh, the whole idea that you know us calling you know say this gadget here a product of the free market, that's not correct. The interactions between people as the free market, I would say, does still allow the free market to exist. Uh, so the creation of this item, not free market. But say I give this to you in exchange for 20 bucks, I would consider that free market uh, because the individual interactions in society, uh, in, in the world at, at all, uh, where you're voluntarily trading goods and services for other goods and services, you know, it'll be the exact same way with or without the government. Uh, does Am I making any sense here? Am I talking out well, my you're, ass? You're talking about like a, a, a very scaled-down market, a very individual market, and, and like a, a cross-section, I guess, of the overall market. And I, I'd say what you're you're really doing is you're pulling away all the the freer aspects of it, you know, basically void of government regulation, saying that is free. But I'm talking about the whole picture of when government coercion is included in the equation, it, it no longer is free. I mean, it, it's like if you're a slave, are are you free to do what you want? Well, I, I can, you know, I, I guess I can jump. I can wave my hand in the air. But if I'm a slave, I, I am not permitted to leave the slave owner's ownership and, and have self-ownership. I'm not permitted to do that. So I, I would say that you can say you're free relative to this very isolated enclosure. But if, you, if you're talking about the whole picture, no, there is no freedom. Well, I mean, I'll, Hayek, I think, made a mention of this, and I'm, I'm only kind of mentioning this as a result of the, the Kane's Hayek rap videos. Uh, I don't know if you've seen them or if anybody else has seen them. Um, but the, the market is the people. You know, the market is not you know, some institution, and I know you understand this, uh, the market right. not being some kind of you know, monolithic creature that you know, lumbers through and eats hey, children. You know, you <laughs> eats children and uh, shits out iPhones. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's something that, you know, again, people, you know, in, you know, we're, you know, let's just say we were in talks with you know, company XYZ about getting custom controllers or company XYZ about getting shirts, uh, or, you know, we're reached out to by some place for a sponsorship, or, you know, the people who come to my girlfriend's work to buy groceries, or people who come by, uh, you know, who do, or, well, just companies that trade with each other, stuff like that, or the companies that send capital goods from one storage facility to another to be put in this factory to build this part, you know, pulling the the whole iPencil uh, article, you know, despite the state... Uh, and all of its bullshit regulations, uh, I I think that a, a free market is thriving on you know underneath it. Um, would am I am I completely off base here? I mean I could be. I'm more than happy to admit that I'm wrong. I mean I'm just. I mean I, I like I said it, it's just going to go back to that that it so long as there are government regulations that are trying to be imposed upon you, you can't truly really say you're free. Even if you have a free state of mind, even if. Uh, it, there are people, and and yeah, people can interact on individual scale through black market activities or through just selling person to person. But still, at the end of the day, the government's overseeing everything you're doing, trying to, and in any course of that trade, they're going to try to interfere and get their cut. Gotcha. So you make a great point in the article as well, and uh, you mentioned that you know if we use the term free market in the context of modern day trade in the U.S. We're setting them. We're setting ourselves up for uh, the communists to be you know, like, "Hey, look, see, the capitalists say that the current market's free. I'll critique it as such." And I thought that was that was just so perfect. Uh, you know, a good way to put that. 
Um, so that's overall, uh, this is just a great article. Uh, I'm still, it's still an internal battle with me personally, and it could be because of my viewpoint of, you know, I do kind of like to strip things down to the individual, um, you know, whereas you're kind of seeing more of the macro lens, uh, which I probably should be doing a lot more of. Uh, so it's it's giving me a lot of food for thought. Um, well, like, <laughs> like I said in the article about communists in general, it, I, I'm sure you see this all the time on the internet and in general when talking to socialists of any kind. They'll they'll use examples like, oh, look, the market's failed here. Even even Democrats, I mean, socialist light, they'll they'll pull up things and, and say, oh, well, look at look at this catastrophe or that catastrophe caused by big business. You know, your the market has failed you. So we need more state power involved. <laughs> state has never failed you. I mean, when people say that there's a free market, that argument gets multiplied so much more. Right. And it is terrifying when people start listening to them about that. Oh, yeah, I should never have a free market because then those companies will just dump their oil in my yard. But I want them to dump the oil in my yard. Well, if, uh, I want oil. <laughs> I mean, I was born in Texas, and all of us Texans are all greedy, oil-grubbing bastards, aren't we? Yeah, we just pretty much roll around in oil for uh, for six hours of the day, and then the rest of the day we listen to country music, drink profusely, and wear cowboy hats, all while riding a horse. Right. So, <laughs> so I'll I'll read this final paragraph here because yeah, you know, you've got just a a way of closing out articles uh, a lot better than most people that I know. Um, so you know, definitely keep that up. Uh, you say, if the free market being referenced is in the future tense, sure, fine. A free market is something that would be great to have. Regulations would be self-created through market demands instead of having the prepubescent set of uncontrollable roller coaster emotions like the state has, where it swings around a stick wildly to knock down anything and everything that frightens it and its donors. The issues that individuals find with the current state of affairs would disappear, and through market demand, businesses would actually operate as intended. Taxes would end and wars would be undesirable they would cause immediate financial ruin. Uh, as far as uh, the market is unfortunately not free. Calling it free could harm future chances of there being a free market because potential support is away by government regulation and involvement. So, you know, I'll, I'll, you know what? You're right. Uh, I will retract any statements of disagreement here. Uh, you have won your fourth internet. Um, you know, all you and I are doing is we're just seeing from two different Pers not not even two different perspectives. Now I'm looking at uh, the whole world with my microscope, with my uh, with my what the fuck do they call that telescope? Uh, you know, I'm looking at you know the couple across the street. You've got it zoomed out to be looking at the entire city. Uh, Why well, look so at the couple across the street? What are they doing? Because I want to. God damn it! There's the <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Long story what short, these four articles. <laughs> <laughs> it's the penguins told me to. So yeah, that's long story short. These four articles were utterly brilliant, and okay. you know I look forward to seeing a lot more great articles coming in 2015. And actually, that is uh, something that we need to you know discuss on off time. But um, you know I think a lot of these articles may do well in podcast video form. Uh, whether it be these articles or maybe not even writing an article, just dictating it and doing a video on it in the future, uh, because I think you're a little bit more compelling when you're speaking to people, because you're just so fucking hilarious, dude. It's all <laughs> the, the stuff we get through on the team speak when we're debating with the various few, uh, not e not complete and caps that we have there. Uh, 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 more and more are changing over every day. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, all right, what do we want to <laughs> kind of promote for the next you know, couple of weeks? Do we have any big articles coming up? Um, obviously, I'm going to be doing more of the YouTube stuff. So, uh, actually, I'm going to set a date for myself. Internet, you're going to hold me to it. The first video uh, for Libertarian... Well, maybe not the first video. My first video on LibertarianGaming.org uh, on the YouTube channel. I'm going to have that up January 29th. That gives me two weeks and a day to get this shit together. What the video is going to be about? I have no fucking clue. Varys, help me figure that out after this. Do uh, right. you have any final thoughts? Any good? Any anything you want to promote uh, going forward? Well, 
uh, our website obviously is libertariangaming.org. If you want to write for us, if you want to make videos for us, if you want to manage our Facebook, do whatever, we'll, we'll take any help we can get. Uh, you can contact admin at libertariangaming.org or me at varus at libertariangaming.org. And, and just... And yeah. for the YouTube channel, uh, YouTube at uh, libertariangaming.org or Adam B, A-D-A-M-B at libertariangaming.org and we'll organize whatever we need to organize for you. Uh, for some silly reason, these guys decided to let me be part of running the YouTube channel. Don't know how smart that was, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, so any final thoughts, Varys? Um, uh, well... Anything about Koreans or... What, uh, <laughs> well, I, I need to say that I was going to make some Easy Mac, but it expires today, and I can't tell if the market has failed me or not. <laughs> and I will well, leave you know, that. <laughs> You see, I wouldn't have even been able to sell that because of my license, and if we would, we'd, God, we'd be sued out the ass. <laughs> so anyways, uh, this has been Adam Brown of Liberty Stones for Public Eye with the wonderful Varus from LibertarianGaming.org. We'll be signing off saying peace and love and liberty. We'll catch you another time. Uh, I Hopefully we'll have my next show up next week at its proper time, but who fucking knows with this life anymore. Uh, and Varus will be back eventually in the future. Hope Maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year. Who knows? It'll happen someday. Uh, we'll catch you guys later, and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye!